with that bombshell recording of a phone call revealing President Trump pressuring an election official in Georgia to overturn his defeat to Joe Biden. In the hour-long recording obtained by ABC News, the president is heard telling Georgia's Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, to recount the votes and fine nearly 12,000 more. The president referencing several conspiracy theories that could justify the change and suggesting that Raffensperger could face criminal prosecution if he doesn't comply. Raffensperger, a Republican who says he voted for the president, heard repeatedly rejecting the president's claim, standing by the state's count. And it comes as at least a dozen Republican senators are leading the fight to challenge Joe Biden's victory when Congress meets to certify the election on Wednesday. These efforts dividing Republicans and outraging Democrats, but they are almost certain to fail. ABC's White House correspondent Rachel Scott leads us off in Georgia tonight. The phone call is stunning. President Trump demanding Georgia's Secretary of State find nearly 12,000 votes to change the results of the election. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. In a recording of Saturday's hour-long call first obtained by the Washington Post and obtained in full by ABC News, the president repeatedly pressuring, even at times pleading, with Brad Raffensperger. We won the election and it's not fair to take it away from us like this. The president citing conspiracy theories and what he calls rumors, but providing no evidence to support his claims. The vote here in Georgia has already been counted three times, including an extensive recount by hand. President-elect Joe Biden still the winner. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. The president suggesting Raffensperger is a disloyal Republican. You should want to have an accurate election. And you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I no, you don't. No, no, you don't. You don't have. You don't have. Not even close. You got. You're off by hundreds of thousands of votes. Even threatening some type of criminal action. You're not reporting it. That's a. You know, that's a criminal. That's a criminal offense. And and you know you can't let that happen. That's that's a big risk to you. We asked legal experts if the president's actions broke the law. There's just no question that this is morally problematic that the president of the United States sounds like he's pressuring a state secretary of state to help him win the election. I don't think you're going to see any criminal charges here in connection with what has happened. But there is certainly an argument that the president has walked right up to the line. The president's legal team has lost more than 50 cases in court trying to prove voter fraud. But still 140 House Republicans and at least a dozen senators are fighting and will object to the Electoral College results this week. We ought to have a fair inquiry, a fair audit into these results, and, and, we, and we ought to resolve these claims, not just dismiss them out of hand. Other Republicans outraged. Senator Mitt Romney of Utah writing in a statement, I could have never imagined seeing these things in the greatest democracy in the world. Has ambition so eclipsed principle? They don't have the numbers to change the outcome of the race. But some in the party do fear the president's repeated false claims of a rigged election will cost them control of the Senate. The special election in Georgia now just 48 hours away. A lot of people aren't going out to vote. And a lot of Republicans are going to vote negative because they hate what you did to the president. More than 3 million people here in Georgia have already turned out to vote. But Republican voter Lisa Walston tells me she almost did it worried the runoffs would be rigged. I was reluctant a little bit not to go vote because I was thinking, was this going to happen again? And that's been a big concern for a lot of Republicans. So let's get right to Rachel Scott near Savannah, Georgia, where Vice President-elect Kamala Harris is campaigning for the Democrats in the runoff elections there. She just finished speaking. And Rachel, she and other Democrats are now responding to that recording of the president's call. Wait, just moments ago, Democratic candidate John Ossoff and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris blasted the president's words. Harris tonight saying that it was a voice of desperation, calling it an abuse of power. Democrats say this is nothing short of disgraceful. And tonight, Senator Dick Durbin is calling for a criminal investigation into the president's actions. Wait. It will be another busy week in Washington, Rachel. Thank you. Now, that political drama playing out amid the staggering...